students welcome to toppers league academy my name is misba i am your science teacher today we are going to learn about the topic measurement of length from the chapter measurement class 6 so let's get started when we measure width thickness depth distance and height what we actually do we measure the length in the si system of measurement the unit for length is meter its multiple and sub multiple units are related to each other by the power of 10 let's understand it looking at this conversion have a look here multiple and sub multiple units are related to each other by the power of 10 1 cm equals to 10 mm 10 mm equals to 1 cm so when we increase it by 10 we get 1 cm equals to 10 mm and when we decrease it by 10 we get 10 mm equal to 1 cm 1 m equals to 100 cm 100 cm equal to 1 m so when we are moving from left to right we are increasing it by 10 1 km equals to 1000 m and 1000 m equals to 1 km so when we look from left to right it is increasing in the power of 10 and when we move from right to left it is decreasing in the power of 10 10 meter is the unit for length in most of the countries to ensure that it is the same meter used everywhere we have a special reference it is known as standard meter let's understand more about standard meter in this picture you can have a look at the original standard meter which is kept in the international bureau of weights and measures at sevres near paris france it is made up of an alloy of 90% platinum and 10% iridium metal bar it is kept at a fixed temperature that is 0 degree celsius and was first used in the year 1889 one meter is the distance between two marks on this bar other countries have a copy of this bar the unit meter is too small for measuring some lengths and too large for measuring others so it was decided to increase it in the multiple of 10 for large measures and decrease it by the multiple of 10 for small measures these measures were given special names have a look here multiple units of meter 1 decameter equals to 10 meters 1 hectometer equals to 100 meters 1 kilometer equals to 1000 meters these are the large measures so it was decided to increase it in the multiple of 10 for large measures so when we move from left to right we are increasing it by the multiple of 10 1 decameter equals to 10 meters 1 hectometer equals to 100 meters 1 kilometer equals to 1000 meters sub multiple units of meter 1 decimeter equals to One tenth meters, one centimeter equals to one hundred meters, one millimeter equals to one thousand meters. So it was decided to decrease the small measures by the multiple of ten for small measures. So when we go from left to right, we are decreasing it by the multiple of ten. One decimeter is equal to One tenth of meters. One centimeter equals to one hundredth of meters, and one millimeter equals to one thousandth of meters. To measure the length of an object, we need some instruments. Let's learn about some instruments. 
various instruments like rulers, spherometers, calipers, measuring tape and meter scale are used to measure the length of an object. Length of the straight objects are measured with the help of a ruler or a meter scale. Let's learn more about it. Suppose we have to measure this object. We will use a ruler to measure this object. We will take the measurements from three different positions A, B and C. Position B reads as 13.5 cm. Position C reads as 12.5 cm. Position A reads as 13 cm. Now let's see which position gives the correct reading. Position B wrong reading. Position C wrong reading. Position A gives us the correct reading. While measuring the length using a ruler, the eye must be kept vertically above the end of the object and the corresponding graduation in the line of the sight should be read. This avoids the error due to the thickness of the scale, also called the error due to parallax. So here, point B and C shows us the error due to parallax. So, to measure straight objects, we use ruler. Now, what about measuring curved object or a round object? like the girth of a tree, the chest of a man, what will we do? Yes, we will use measuring tape. Let's learn more about measuring tape. To measure longer lengths, we use a measuring tape. The smallest measurement possible is 1 millimeter. The meter rule and the measuring tape have marks dividing them into centimeter and millimeter. Here we can see a pipe. It is cylindrical in shape. In order to measure the internal diameter and the external diameter of this pipe, we need internal calipers and external calipers. Let's learn more about it. Measuring the external diameter of a pipe. This is a pipe which is cylindrical in shape. We have to measure the external diameter of this pipe. An external caliper is used to measure the external diameter of a pipe. A ruler is used to record the measurements. The external caliper is placed around the object. Then it is placed on the ruler to record the measurement. Here the external diameter of this pipe is 7.5 cm. This is how we measure the external diameter of a pipe. Measuring the internal diameter of a pipe. This is a pipe which is cylindrical in shape. We have to measure the internal diameter of this pipe. We use an internal caliper. The internal caliper is placed in the inner portion of the pipe. A ruler is used to record the measurement. Here the internal diameter of a pipe is 5 cm. This is how we measure the internal diameter of a pipe. Here you can see a curved object. Now how will we measure this curved object? There is a different technique that is used to measure the curved object. Let's learn more about it. Measuring the length of a curved object. Here the picture shows two points A and B on the curved surface of an object. The length of the curved surface can be measured by using a thread. Spread a thread along the surface of the object and make it tight between the points A and B. Now spread the length of the thread AB on the scale starting from its zero and take the required measurements. Here the length of the thread is 15 cm. So the length of the curved surface is 15 cm. We all can see a circle. How to measure the diameter of a circle? Simple, we will use a measuring scale. But what about 
a tennis ball. This is a sphere. How will we measure the diameter of this tennis ball? There is a different technique that is used to measure the diameter of a sphere. Let's learn more about it. Measuring the diameter of a sphere On a table, place the tennis ball whose diameter is to be measured. Two rectangular blocks of wood are placed on either side of the ball. They are placed such that they touch the opposite sides of the spherical object. Then we adjust the lower edges of the blocks along a ruler. The reading is taken for each face of the block touching the spherical object. The difference between two readings gives the measurement of the diameter of the sphere. Box A is kept at 3 cm. Box B is kept at 6.5 cm. Therefore, diameter of the ball equals to 6.5 minus 3 which is equal to 3.5 cm. There is a different technique that is used to measure thin objects like coin, newspaper. Let's learn more about it. To measure the thickness of a coin, we will use a ruler. We will take 20 coins together and stack them close to a ruler as shown in this diagram. Thickness of the stack is 7 cm. Number of coins equal to 20. Thickness of a coin equals to thickness of the stack divided by number of coins which is equal to 7 divided by 20. So we get the answer as 0 0.35 centimeter. So the thickness of one coin is 0 0.35 centimeter. To convert it into millimeter we will multiply it by 10 so 0 0.35 into 10 gives us 3.5 millimeter. Thickness of one coin is 0 0.35 centimeter. This is how we measure the thickness of a coin. Measuring bigger objects or larger objects is very easy. But what about smaller objects? Measuring the smaller objects is not impossible. So, let's learn more about how to measure some smaller objects. Measuring very small lens. Sometimes we need to measure very small lens. For example, the diameter of machine parts, the diameter of fine wire. For measuring such small lens, the vernier calipers and screw gauge are used. Let's learn more about it. Vernier caliper. At the top it has jaws for measuring inner dimensions. At the bottom it has jaws for measuring outer dimensions. Then there is a screw clamp. There is a vernier scale at the bottom. Next to vernier scale is the meter scale and at the end of the vernier caliper is stem for measuring depth. Now let's learn about screw gauge. Screw gauge. This is a screw gauge. There is an anvil. The black color is the frame. Next to anvil is the spindle. The black color, there is a small lock. Next to lock is the sleeve with main scale. Then there is a thimble with rotating vernier scale. 
and at the end is ratchet knob this is about the screw gauge today we studied about so today we learned multiple and sub multiple units of meter unit of length that is standard meter measuring with the help of a ruler without parallax error measuring large lengths with the help of a measuring tape measuring the length of a curved object measuring the diameter of a sphere measuring the thickness of thin objects measuring the length of very small objects measuring internal and external diameter of a cylinder if you have any queries regarding this topic you can write to us on the below given email address in the description box thank you for watching this video keep learning